And we've been joined on the program by the Chief Executive Officer at Westphalia Resources and also an economist. He is Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for coming on the program. Good to have me here. I, I like to always start on this note in relation to the recent reports about Nigeria from uh, Wall Street Journal, which I think is also linked to foreign direct investment, as a lot of companies in the, in the West, in Europe and America, have shown interest and, and are actually you know, rated Nigeria as the most watched economy among frontier markets. At this point, it seems everyone is looking towards Nigeria. What do you think could be the reasons? Well, despite the challenges, I think uh, Nigeria still uh, have uh, a favorable um, market to compare to other places. Mm -hmm. And then you will realize that uh, this is a huge market for investors to tap into. And um, if you look at the currency of fluctuation, the foreign exchange issue, that's another opportunity for foreign investors to look towards this end. Um, One dollar is about... Uh, 180 or 200 and something right now and if you bring uh, one million dollar you know what you're going to have and that as well gives an opportunity for investment so if you look with this huge population with the um, level of understanding and the markets and the educated masses that we have here i think it's a place you will look into and uh, considering the fact that most of the businesses that have already been here they are not uh, losing money they are making huge uh, profits and then uh, it's, it's encouraging to know that uh, other companies would like to join them. Mm. I'd like us to look at the impact of FDI to Nigeria in terms of developmental impact uh, of FDIs on the Nigerian economy in relation to job creation, employment, uh, issues that relate to uh, production, acquiring of assets, ownership of assets. What impact do you think FDIs usually have on Nigeria? Does it benefit Nigeria yeah, sure, in the sure, long term? Sure. sure, in the long time, even in short time, there's a great benefit. Uh, because if you are bringing uh, investors into this country, and if you are investing in this country, uh, definitely you will need the local resources as well. You will need the local manpower. You need the people who understand the culture and the business uh, orientation in Nigeria. So um, that said, you realize that uh, unemployment is an issue, but then uh, we have to train people. These people have to come with the intention of training our people, with the intention of employing our people, with the intention of building a lasting uh, organization, not just to come in here and say, look, within the next two or three years. It has to be a longer lasting uh, plan. And I think most of these businesses, they know that. And uh, the effect is a long-term benefit. But at the same time, we must be cautious to say that we must give the parameter. We must give the, the, the rules. I mean, if you are coming in, maybe we say, okay, we're encouraging you to come into Nigeria. We'll give you two or three years, you know, to have things done, tax reliefs and stuff like that. But we must make some rules and laws to guide this investment. Now, listen, even if you are doing this, you have the right to repatriate your, your, your profits. And about there must be uh, certain rules that guide the foreign direct investment in Nigeria so that it's not just uh, you come in and... Um, take everything out and there's nothing left for us. You don't just bring mm -hmm. all your people from abroad. You have to make sure that we employ the people locally and we have to train them, even if they are not capable of what you want to do. But then there should, there should be some kind of rules to guide this investment. It's not just an uh, open-end kind of investment. You come, do what you like. So we have to. And at the same time, we have to make sure that benefits have to be given to those people. Because if you are coming in here, it's just not just, okay, outsourcing the, uh, the job for people to just come in and earn peanuts. If you are paying some, a, a, an employee uh, somewhere in America, maybe you're paying him $10,000. That should not be an excuse for you to come in here and say you want to pay them just $2,000. I mean, we should be able to have the, the parameters. We should be able to say, listen, these are qualified people, and you have to treat them well. You should mm -hmm. be able to prepare for their pension, their health benefits. All these things have to be put in place. While we want them to come in and invest, we should be able to say, look, invest and follow the intentional practice. I'd like us to just take to the issue of employment, and uh, I understand that when a company uh, comes to a country, the host country actually enjoys the benefit of um, uh, leading the managerial positions in that, for that company. That's a host country. If a, co country, a, co a company comes to the Nigeria from a foreign uh, land, those of us here, you know, seems to top the management uh, positions for that company. Does that really add up? Does that really help? in well, the development of that company and of course in terms of employment now right. well in some cases may not mm. in some cases may not you know but i think most of these uh, uh, foreign investors are getting smarter 
I mean, that means if you are going to come to Nigeria, you look for a brilliant Nigerian guy who's already there, who understands the fundamentals, who understands the basic from there, and bring it down here. Um, I'll give you an example. When I was uh, um, working for a, a, an, an, Aus an Austrian company, I was employed to come to Africa. So it was, I, I was the vice president of that company for Africa. So automatically, it, it sends a signal that, listen, just don't send somebody there. Send somebody there who understands the, 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 the country, the continent, and the people, we accept them. So it's, it's an understanding now that if you are sending someone to Africa, you better look for a brilliant African guy to go into the place. And if you want to come to Nigeria, we have a lot of Nigerians who are brilliant out there who can come to manage. But I tell you what, in most cases, these guys want to have their own person there. And that's not, that's not anything to, to be afraid of. I mean, let these guys come in and they will have to understand that they are brilliant local people who we can use and we can train. That's why I say you have to train and retrain some of these guys. But I tell you what, it's a wise thing to have a local and it's another wise thing to bring somebody who can uh, show what the locals will learn from. Mm. So it's, it's a win-win situation. Now, earlier on in my introduction, I talked about assets, that when a, country, a company comes to a foreign country to invest, it acquires assets. Now, in the case of Nigeria, knowing well, uh, fully well that our currency has been devalued uh, to make exports cheaper for Nigerians and import uh, a bit expensive so that we can concentrate more on locally produced uh, items. But for the foreign investor coming into Nigeria, he has all the money to buy our, our property, our assets here. I asked the Minister of uh, Trade, Industry, Trade and Investment when he came on the show and I asked him that isn't that a threat to Nigerian assets, to Nigeria? Because if a foreigner can buy so much with so little based on the value of his own currency, isn't that a threat to us? No, it's not a threat, it's an advantage. I mean, if, <coughs> excuse me, if, uh, if an investor is coming in and is buying assets, most of these artists, assets are immovable. They mm -hmm. cannot take, if, if you build a factory in Nigeria, you cannot move that whole building away. I mean, so it's an asset. And in most cases, when you are setting up all these uh, factories all around uh, the world, you consider that. So it's, it's a good thing. It's an advantage to an investor coming into Nigeria. And for us as Nigerians, it's an advantage for us because we have this asset on our soil. Mm -hmm. So we can control, we will enjoy so many things. They will pay taxes on this asset. And, and, you know, and when you begin to look at that, um, if you have a company who is setting up a factory on this uh, express route, right now. Mm. You're beginning to see that other people want to come in there because they see, okay, if this one can set up a factory around this area, we should join. And so those are the kind of advantages we have. And I think we should begin to look at areas where we really need foreign direct investment. In the area of mining, for instance, I mean, Ekiti State is there. You can just see that we have to begin to look for investors in some areas where we really need, uh, because when you say uh, unemployment, unemployment, I mean, we have to know the areas, but if Ekiti State and some other states say, look, mining, we want to concentrate on mining. We want to concentrate on fishing. You go to Ondo State, you have the River Rhine area, you go to River State. They just begin to identify the industries where we really need foreign direct investment. It's not just to say we need foreign direct investment. We need investors to come in. Okay, the oil and gas is already known, well established. People know where to go. But people don't know where to go in some industries. So we should be able to tell them these are industries you can invest and there's a good return on investment. Agriculture, for instance, is a good place to bring investors into the country. So are we doing that much or we're just saying, look, let local guys begin to do it. We need foreign investment in certain industry where there will be good return on investment and for the people, the locals. If someone should come into uh, Ogun State or, or your state or wherever to have thousands of acres or hectares of land, it's not going to move the land away. Mm -hmm. so, so these are the areas we begin to identify before we say, look, we are bringing them in, identify the industry, and begin to tell them this is where we need it. Okay. Experts believe that multinational corporations usually use, or may use, let me just put it like that, may use higher pay to attract highly skilled local workers and ensure quality and productivity, given the higher cost of uh, monitoring from abroad. Does that really work for any country, the host country, in terms of the fact that multinationals usually uh, promise to give higher incentives to work for them. Does that really work? Well, sure. I mean, like I said, uh, if you're bringing a qualified, uh, <coughs> excuse me, agriculturalist, uh, a qualified uh, personnel from 
the U.S. That guy is not going to come to Nigeria because he's coming back home, just for coming back home's sake. But if he's any less take $10,000, and you're saying, look, you're leaving your uh, base to come to this place, you might offer him an incentive. Okay, if you go to Nigeria or wherever in Africa, you have this incentive, you're closer to your home, and you have maybe fifteen or 20000 and all that. So don't forget, you are moving him away from that place. And that is why I'm saying that few will come with them, but the majority will be the locals. And this is one of the reasons why I've said we have to set the rules right. So it's not as if you are bringing those guys to just come and boss everybody and hire, because it will demoralize the locals if they know that this guy is coming out and doing the same job he is doing, or maybe I'm more qualified and I'm not receiving that, I'm not earning that much. So we have to begin to look at that. And this is where the human resources aspect comes in. I mean, most of our graduates, let's face it, most of our graduates cannot really cope. And those who are experienced in the industry in Nigeria, they are already earning well anyway. So if you see a good banker or a good uh, physician who is doing well, he's doing well because he's good and he's being well paid locally as well. So we have to begin to what I think if we say we want foreign direct investment to, uh, to, to really be an active thing we think about really, we should begin to look at the area of human resources. We should begin to train the people. It is not when these guys come in that we begin to say, oh, no, employ them first and then begin to train them. So we should have a mechanism whereby we are training our people to meet the challenges because these are challenges people are saying. Ask any manufacturer today or any businessman or woman, they tell you that, listen, we have challenges getting qualified people. So if we say we have millions of youths roaming around the street, but are they qualified to take this job? So this would be a big challenge. And when someone comes into this country and he doesn't have those qualified people, you can't blame him if he has to go back and say, listen, let me bring some of these guys to come. So that's a big challenge. Now, FDI is regarded as a main source of external finance and on average is worth twice as much as official development aid. Why do you think this is so? Yes, because you see, uh, people, uh, most global investors, they are not stagnant. You know, they look for opportunities. And when you are looking for opportunities, you know where you are really needed. If you go to um, Rwanda, for instance, you see a lot of things going on in Rwanda, for instance, right now. And go to even Burundi, some of these countries in Africa, uh, in Africa you see, people are looking into what can I tap into that place. But, it is an opportunity for us to understand it. It is an opportunity for us to see that there is always, let's look at our own advantage. If it is not going to be of advantage to us, why do you want them to come in in the first instance? But these guys are smart and they are not stagnant. Look at the rate at which Nigeria has been uh, blessed with uh, so many hotels coming in, all these five stars hotels lately. Uh, you see, it's an opportunity, but if we look at disadvantages, sure there will be a couple of disadvantages, a couple of factors we have to look into, but we are looking at, we should be looking at the, uh, the advantages that will make people to see Nigeria as uh, a favorable place to really invest because uh, investors are not stagnant. And I tell you, um, Europe today and America, they have no option than to come to Africa. If you look at it, they have no option because the economy is stagnant. You have problems all over the place there. ECB is just rolling out trillions of, of euro to rescue the economy. So if you're a smart investor, you would like to say, okay, look, if I have this much, why don't I look elsewhere? So mm -hmm. we are at advantage at this time. If you look at there's a global recession, whatever name people would call it in all countries, Europe is facing the mess. America is facing it. That's why they are looking at elsewhere. Okay, where do I go? Let me go to Cuba and begin to look at that place and begin to look at tourism. But there are some industries in Nigeria that we're not really talking about.